for episode three of Team OOWI's Kansas turkey hunting trip where I am up to bat. Well, we had a pretty exciting morning. Mike had five birds come in. Got, I think, the biggest one probably out of the bunch. And uh, we were ready to rock and roll, not even an hour into our hunt. And we were looking for bird number two. Well, even though it was mid-morning, we even had some action. We had about 10 hens and jakes come into the field, completely ignoring my feeble attempts at calling them closer. Well, seeing how we muddled up the first field that all the turkeys were in, we moved over to the field that Mike had scouted out on Wednesday evening, and uh, we were hoping to catch some action in there. After lunch and doing some scouting out of the rest of the property, looking at some maps, we decided to key in on a different field for our Thursday afternoon hunt. After watching all these birds for a while, the sun begins to set. Once the light hits the angle right away, we realize we're looking at a group of 10 jakes. Every single one of them had a little tuft of a beard. We were still holding out hope that they might come close before they headed to roost for the night. Back at it Friday morning in the same field, Mike shot his bird the morning before. We assumed that at least one or two of the four remaining toms would have to venture back out into that field, but we assumed wrong. For our Friday afternoon hunt, we were going back to the same field that we saw one gobbler and ten jakes in the afternoon before, except we had a little bit better bead on what they were going to be doing. We moved about 100 to 200 yards to the west of the field, a lot closer to where they were flying up to roost for the night. Not long after we got set up, only about 75 or 100 yards to our left, our group of 10 jakes started filing out in the field. And once you know it, right behind them was one lone mature tom. The entire group of birds was completely ignoring our calling and decoy setup. And soon after entering the field, the only mature tom in the group took three jakes with them and headed for the far fence line about 400 yards away. But we were down to our last afternoon here in Kansas. We still had seven jakes in the field, and I fully intended letting and release on the first one that came within our 20-yard circle. This group of jakes spent a lot of time in the field, but we quickly realized they were simply not interested in romance, still completely ignoring our calls and decoys. Instead, they were interested only in filling their stomachs. Being this was our last afternoon to hunt, only had one morning to go after this, we are starting to feel kind of deflated, but couldn't even get another jake on the ground. Well, with only an hour left of our last full day in Kansas, all the jakes disappeared in the woods. The only time we knew of, three quarters of a mile away over the hill. Tune in next week for episode four to see if anything happens to turn around.